everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a care plan and this one's a little bit special because this one is going to be on a baby. So let's get into it. So our baby is a one day old newborn who has a temperature of 102.3 degrees Fahrenheit. She had apnea during her first few hours of life and is appearing lethargic. Mom had SROM, so spontaneous rupture of membranes, her water broke and was broken for 18 hours before delivery. So that's a long time for your water to be broken. And the newborn is having poor feedings. So just by listening to this information, the first thing you should be thinking is infection, right? This baby has some sort of infection because mom's water was broken for such a long time. So of course, our first nursing diagnosis is going to be risk for infection. So risk for infection related to that SROM, that spontaneous rupture of membranes of 18 hours. The longer your water is broken, the higher your risk of getting an infection. So really anything over 12 hours is a really long time. So 18 hours, definitely this baby is at risk for an infection. Our goal will be the newborn will be free from signs of infection within 48 hours. And I put 48 hours and not, you know, by the end of the shift or anything like that, because this is a lot more realistic. Baby's already showing signs. It has the fever. It's having the trouble breathing. It's lethargic. It's not eating well. So it's already showing those signs of infection. We don't expect them to be, you know, fixed right away within an 8 to 12 hour shift. So 48 hours is a little bit more reasonable. So what can we do? We need to assess for those signs of infection, such as poor feeding, pallor, and an increased temperature. And our rationale for that, temperature may be elevated or subnormal in newborn sepsis. And that's true. When we think of a fever, we think, you know, over 100.4, but on babies, it can also go the other way. So we want to assess the temperature to make sure that it's in a normal range and not too high or too low. And we'll say that our goal was met. The newborn was free from signs of infection at 48 hours. The newborn's temperature was stable at 98.9, and she showed no signs of respiratory distress. So in this evaluation, we can say that our goal was met. We're gonna say exactly what that goal was, and then we're gonna show some proof of it, right? Because in our goal, we said the signs of infection. So in our evaluation, we're actually showing the proof of those signs. So the temperature normal, not having any apneic spells, things like that, those are good signs that baby is, you know, over the hump and getting better from the infection. Our next one I had to address that poor feeding. So imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to poor feeding. So our goal is nutritional needs will be met and maintained within 24 hours. So as baby starts getting those fluids, antibiotics, they start to feel a little bit better, they're more likely to start eating a little bit better, or we're not going to feed them breast or bottle, we might gavage feed them, it kind of depends on what's going on. But either way, 24 hours is a pretty realistic number for them, you know, getting back on track, or at least getting started to get back on track. So what are we going to do for our intervention? Assess for weight loss, vomiting, diarrhea, poor sucking ability, and then large residuals of feedings by gavage. Our rationale, caloric loss through vomiting, diarrhea, or poor intake will cause weight loss. And baby's only one day old. We don't want them to lose too much weight, right? It's not safe. It's normal for them to lose a little bit of weight in those first few days of life, but we don't want them to lose too much weight. So our goal has been met. The newborn is able to tolerate feedings at 24 hours. The newborn displays active sucking at breast and has maintained their weight. Now at this stage, we don't expect them to start gaining weight, not quite yet, because it's only one day old, but saying that they've maintained their weight, they haven't lost too much weight, that's good. That means the goal has been met and that we've set good interventions for this patient. So that was my video, care plan for a newborn showing signs of infection. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.